to tell your story on how you intend to help uh, others uh, achieve what, uh, what they're looking for uh, by patronizing your business. Uh, of course, you can also look at Instagram. Instagram is a complimentary uh, social media that actually tells a story about businesses, it's more of pictorial. Um, and then uh, Twitter, Twitter complements your blog. If you have a blog uh, on a website or, or whatnot, and then you can actually uh, tap into a, a worldwide contact. You must know how to mix and match these tools for the benefit of your business. Of course, another uh, important tool, face-to-face, -to -face, you cannot knock face-to-face -face out. Face-to-face -face gathering, of course, COVID-19 has come and then has restricted face-to-face -face gathering. But of course, we hope that in the nearest future, we can get back to face-to-face. -to -face. Um, statistics has shown uh, that majority of uh, people buy from people that they know. And how do you get to know people? It's through face-to-face -face interaction. Face-to-face -face interaction, you can actually pour your feelings and then they can actually trust you by actually seeing uh, that dealing with a real life person. Uh, now we've talked on social. So if you don't have a social media handle, you want to start to do that now for your business. You want to get on it. If you don't have the expertise, you want to contact expert, experts that can help you build an online presence for your business. That is important, all right? Then we talked about the, uh, the, second, the second one is to be helpful. So you need to be helpful to people. Um, you don't just want to, want to take, all right? You have to be able to give back. And that's what International Builders is trying to do today by giving back to the society, all right? They're trying to give back through this foundation, through this initiative. You must always try to give back. It's not all about taking. When you network, when you build your contacts, you build your contacts, you build your, uh, uh, your portfolio of friends that can help you refer your business, you also want to give back to them. Uh, there are very, various ways you can give back. Some might need tips. It's everything you charge money for as a business. You know, give tips on how to sustain your business. Be truthful, be helpful in, in what you're trying to do. Don't just be out there trying to take. It's a give and take relationship, all right? Then the, the third one is to build a reputation. How do you build a reputation? You've already gone about networking. We've learned about how to network. We've learned about one of the tips on how to improve your networking by being helpful. Now you want to build a reputation. You cannot have built all those uh, networking uh, 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 group or the, the contacts you've garnered through networking, and then you want to blow it off by being, uh, 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 you know, untruthful or being uh, uh, some sort of uh, a suspect person or someone that they cannot talk well about. So you need mm -hmm. to build a reputation yes, for yourself. Yes. Your yes should be your yes, and your no should be your no. One thing that we've learned uh, in Nigeria okay. we're very, uh, uh, is very common. You tell someone, I'm going to be at a meeting at 10 a.m. Okay, you're still in your right. bathroom. And then yeah, you're telling them, I'm on, on the way. Uh, it's not good. If you do that over and over, over time, you're going, to know, you're going to be known for that. And you can actually put okay. people off. Okay, that's fine. If you're coming to a meeting, okay. be uh, in time. If you're not going to make it in time, you let them know, look, I'm running late. All right? And don't make it a trend. You also build a reputation with your brand. When you create a brand, you make sure that your brand ad addresses the issue. You don't just start to do so many things at a time. And then people will be confused about what you are presenting. That is one. Then of course you think, uh, uh, the fourth one, you think long-term. When you think of long-term, you think about, you've met someone today, how do you want to see yourself relate to that person in 10 years time? You don't just think short term. You're offering a business. You don't just think of what you want to get right now. You think about what you want to see come out of the relationship. A lot of entrepreneurs get it wrong. And I tell you, you know, of course, we can go on and on. I wish I had enough time, but I don't. And this, uh, I could have shared more views with you. Uh, majority of businesses fail. And statistics show that, nine, uh, sorry, about 85% of businesses fail in their first year. And another, another 15% uh, uh, make it above the five-year mark. So what I'm trying to say is, without reputation, you find out that you cannot go far. Because all it takes to break a deal is for you to sit on the table, and the person will say, oh, we'll get back to you. All right? We'll get back to you. That means that this person's gotten a signal from somewhere to probably stop the deal. Or by getting back to you, that time between that short while of getting back to you, someone around the corner 
or by, by the person doing the research, you'll find out that you're not a reputable person. And that knocks you off. All right, knocks you off, literally. And I'll tell you a, a, a brief story of my of my own uh, 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 my own uh, experience. Uh, recently, I was opportune to be in a committee of uh, a very big estate for uh, for their power power committee, and I happened to meet a, um, one of the customers we serve, and they were like, "Oh, this is O'Neill, this is Waveland," and it was like, "Oh, we know you, we can trust you." So what that did for me was it just it just made everything go easy. But you can imagine if at that point in time. I had already offended that person. I eloped with his money. I would have been, you know, thrown out of the bush, uh, or, or probably arrested. So you want to make sure that long-term thinking goes with you, and then what you want to gain in the long term is going to take time. You build on it. You just don't try and, you know, make all you want to make in a short term. A lot of entrepreneurs want to make money and get rich quick. It's not a way to go. Long-term thinking is a way to go for business growth. And of course, the fifth one I've picked on today, it's uh, what you call a follow-up. Now, majority of business owners do not know how to follow up. Uh, how do you follow up? You've gone, you've gone to an event, you've probably a conference, you've exchanged cards with someone, and then, and that's oh, it. Know, the card gets put in your office and you don't get to follow up on it. You know, so by meeting someone, you follow up with an email, you follow up with a call, you thank them for at least giving you an opportunity to talk to you. That way you get to build a rapport. If you meet someone online, you create a relationship. You don't just go trying to sell. Most especially, I've been on LinkedIn and someone just meeting me for the first time, added me on a contact and trying to sell to me. No, it's not a way to go. You build a relationship over time and then you get to build a trust. How do you build a trust if you don't follow up? If you get a no, that's not the end of the world. If you send emails and there's no reply, don't just give up. You move on to the next level. And I remember one of our major customers uh, came through networking. The first of my, uh, uh, my first major deal came through online networking. How did that happen? I was on LinkedIn just minding my business. I didn't know that someone was looking at me and watching what I was doing. We got 15 sales in one day, 15 large orders in one, on one day. And I didn't have to sell. Um, that was marketing for me because I was trying to do the right thing. Another one came uh, just by knocking on the door. I met a friend of mine who fed me and I got a, uh, in touch with the company. Of course, it was a very tough company to deal with. It took us six months to break, uh, break ground. I kept on sending emails, there was no response. Eventually we got a try. The day we got a try, I actually knelt in my office thanking God because I knew that was a breakthrough. And how did that happen? If I didn't follow up, a matter of fact, I actually went through to the office and knocked on their door several days. And you have to do that. You have to be able to follow up to at least get what you want to get. And when in following up, you don't want to be intrusive and annoying. All right. You have to give people space, know how to follow up, know that you're, you know, you know, hounding people with phone calls, unnecessary emails and whatnot. Be as be direct as you can, but again, be cautious in your follow-up. All right. So we've learned the five tips of uh, networking for business growth. And I'll repeat again. Uh, the first one is to be social. You be social through your connection, online media, your blogs, um, and then, of course, face-to-face -face networking, uh, and in your own, uh, 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 every network that, that you, you can create. You can also join associations. There are associations out there strictly for networking that's available for you. Uh, the second one, you need to be helpful to people. You don't just want to take, you want to give back. You need to build a reputation. Be who you are, say what you want to do, and do what you've promised to do, all right? And then the, the third one is to, um, uh, sorry, we're talking about build a reputation, the third one, think long-term. Think long-term is the fourth one. You think long-term, you just don't think about making money now, all right? Don't think about, you want to grab all, all the opportunities at the moment. Long-term, how do you see deal, me dealing with this person in the next 10 years? How, do you, how will this person speak about me in the next 20 years? And the final one that I've mentioned, again, is, uh, uh, follow up. Um, yeah, so that brings us to, uh, 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 I mean, we close on the five tips and I'll not just go into a little bit about my story. So I started my company uh, a little about 10 years ago, about a decade ago, and I started off on the dining table. Uh, by the grace of God, we're about 140 strong employees at the moment that are doing wonderful things for Africa uh, and Nigeria uh, precisely as a whole. Um, we've grown into many 
uh, 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 areas of Nigeria where we're working in about 23 states at the moment. But it didn't just start in a day. I mean, it's a decade. It didn't just start straight away. And one of my major keys to success is networking. Networking has been a key to our business growth. I've already told you that our first major sales came from networking, from someone contacting me. And then I've got more businesses from referrals than any marketing, all right? So for me, grow at a pace that is steady, not too slow, but not too fast. And the way to do it is through networking. I also have a formula I'm gonna leave with you today, all right? Uh, I have four formula, a formula that I've built up. I call it the four Ps. And they are being persistent, being patient, you persevere, and you add prayers to it. I repeat, persistence in no order, persistence, perseverance, patience, and prayer. You can try these formulas of mine, and it works for you as well. But of course, in the four Ps, networking is part of it. How do you network being persistent? You keep going and keep going. How do you network uh, being, uh, 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 to, how do you network being a, 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 a persevering person? You don't take no for an answer, but you do it meaningfully well by not trying to annoy who you're trying to get, get to. How do you network by being patient? Results don't come in a day. It's over time. Take your time, you keep going and keep going, and eventually it will definitely come to fruition. And again, of course, you know, I like to add prayer to it. Prayer, of course, helps. So you pray, talk to your God, it helps you, and eventually everything will come to life. Once again, I'd like to thank you. My name is O'Neill Lajuomi, CEO of Westland IPS. I thank International Bureau for doing this, and I cannot, I can, I, I cannot uh, wait to be with you next time. I'll be staying, I'll be staying tuned uh, to see what uh, Kickstart has developed uh, over time. I mean, the initiative has, has been able to develop uh, in the mindset of people. And I want to congratulate all of you that have uh, taken your time to be on this uh, 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 program today. Uh, by joining in, it means that you are actually taking your business uh, seriously. Remember, networking for business growth is essential, all right? To, uh, it's an essential key to the success of your business. Once again, I thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. O'Neill. That was awesome. Awesome. So much value in so short a time. I told you at the beginning, have your notebooks handy because we're getting people who have walked the terrain. This is not theory. So people who are running businesses have run businesses for years. I mean, see what he said. He began from the beginning and today he has over a hundred employees. That's a lot of hard work over the years. Thank you so much, Mr. O'Neill, so much value. He taught us about networking for business growth. Then he went to the four Ps. Now, next up, we have the floor open for questions. So you can either, we have the question and answer box. You can send the question. If you want to speak, let's know, um, give an opportunity to ask questions. You know, some of us have run businesses for one year, two years, and I'm sure we've had some challenges, ups and downs. So whatever question you have, Mr. O'Neill is available to take your questions. Once again, the theme for this alumni hangout is networking for business growth. One thing he said that struck me as a person is that business is about exchange. You don't go just go all out there to grab, 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 you know, and you're hounding people up and down. He said persevere, but don't be a pest. So you can be persistent or be polite about it. And business is about meeting needs. So you look for ways to help people, help them, let them see how your business solves their problems. And that way they want to come back. And then, so it's about caring for, your, for people, not just, you know, um, it's not just about them buying your products and services, no. It's about showing them how your product meets their need. And then it becomes, a relationship. Business is about people. Networking for growth. Networking for growth. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate you and the value you have shared. Now the floor is open for questions. Yes, you have questions. Please let us know. Questions, feedback, reactions to our first speaker. 
I have some reactions here. I'll read them while we wait for questions. Ayokunle says, it was such a wonderful one. Thank you, sir. Ululope Bangbo, she says, awesome and precise presentation. Thank you, sir. Kayode says, that's great. Um, so Madina says, thank you, sir, for your time and for your teaching. Awesome, awesome, awesome feedback. So that we have questions, questions, questions. Any questions you have for Mr. O'Neill? This is the time. Feedback. Yes, Thelma says, very impactful. Another person says it was awesome. So much value in so short a time, precise, concise. Yes, Chidi says, thank you for the wonderful presentation. Okay, so Martina has a question. Yes, please. Okay, let's see. Tolu says, the piece is everything for me. So, so Martina, let's have your question. Jamil says, nice presentation. Thank you, sir. Yes, we have the Q&A box. You have a question? Please just send it there. Yes. So, Mr. O'Neill, we have the first question for you. Ugochuku Okoye says, how, do, how does one go about the follow-up concept? Remember, you talked about following up after a meeting. So, someone is asking, they want you to shed more light on the concept of follow-up. Mr. O'Neill, please, can we have your reaction to this question? He wants you to, Gochuku wants you to throw more light on how to go about following up with a prospect. Um, first of all, I, I'd like to say that's a very good question, Gochuku. Follow up is key. For, without follow up, all that said is a waste of time. Uh, without follow up, networking is a waste of time. So how do you follow up? You've met someone, let's, uh, let's take a scenario. You met someone at a networking, at a conference. You get a business card and you put it in your pocket. Um, I will not do that. I will, look at a, I will look at a business card and try to scan it as quickly as I can. There are apps on your phone that you can store, you can download, and you can scan someone's card and it saves everything at once. The emails, the phone numbers and everything. And then you can quickly shoot an email. Thanks for meeting, uh, meeting me today or finding time to speak with me. If you can't do it straight away, you can wait till you get home. All the contacts is built up. You write them an, a short email. One way I do that quickly is I have a, um, you know, steps on my, on my phone, notes on how to respond to people. So you can type short responses on a note on your phone, and then you pick it up, you email, I've just met Ogochuku today. Ogochuku, thanks for meeting me today. Uh, I thank you for finding time to speak with me. Uh, I hope that we can, I can be fruitful to you. Simple as ABC. You also go a further step, try to connect with the person on social media. For businesses, LinkedIn is about the best. I'm not an advocate for LinkedIn, but because I've actually benefited from it. Try to connect on LinkedIn. If you're not on LinkedIn, set up a profile, all right? And then follow up. You've done an email. You've done a, a connection on social media. The person starts to see your activity. Then you follow up, all right? You follow up with a call. You follow up with an email. Try to check on them. And then request for a visit to the office or request for a meeting. And that's how you, you get, to, get to build your rapport. You don't just start by selling straight away when you even follow up. You start by trying to see how you can create value, how you can understand the pain points of the person, all right? Pain points, I mean, understanding what the person actually needs at the moment. If, if, he doesn't, if the person doesn't need your business, try to refer the person to someone that can help. It's not just all about you. And then that is the way you follow up. If you follow up and you don't get an answer, you wait. I typically, I just wait um, perhaps another week. I shoot a text. Sir, did you see my email? You know? I've met beautiful young minds that have done this so well. And trust me, I've, a lot of people have gotten jobs in our company by networking and by following up. All right? I, I can't remember how many interns we've come, that have come through us. I can't remember how many NYC. I can't remember how many graduates have come through us. And most of them have gone even to do wonderful things. All right? Um, someone that built our, our website and made it really proper. It came from, made me from, it came from, uh, connected me from Worry. And the person is living in Lagos now. You know, true, true LinkedIn. So try to always follow up. Uh, I, I believe uh, I've touched on your, on your question. I'd like to take more questions, please. Thank you. Okay, then. Thank you very much, sir. Just to say to the participants, you can raise your hand if you want to speak and ask your question. But, sir, we have another question for you. Another person, Kayode, says, how do we get potential customers to trust your brand? Bearing in mind that we have a social media space filled with distrust and fraud. There's so much fraud on social media. 
So how do you get a potential customer to see you, like you, believe in you, and then be willing to do business with you? Again, a very valid question. And if you, in my presentation, I did mention about uh, trust or being uh, tight labor as uh, fraudulent. How do you build trust uh, through networking? If you have a social media presence, all right, you have your picture up, you don't just open a social media handle and just put uh, your company logo. You want to present yourself as an actual person. You put your picture up, and of course you can say people can actually put up fake pictures, but trust me, a lot of people do their due diligence. So you put your picture up, you load your profile properly, all right? You have your school that you've attended, you have your businesses that you've, your places that you've worked, and that brings, you build credibility. And again, you make sure that you're founded, you've been found on different pro, uh, platforms. You're not just solely on Facebook. Uh, you're not on just uh, LinkedIn. You're across all platforms. And then your business is speaking the same language. You're not uh, in uh, LinkedIn as someone else or Facebook as uh, Dr. Jax or something. You have to keep it consistent. Make sure everything's attributed to your names. Over time, again, trust is not something that you build in one day. Remember I said, you remember my four Ps, right? Patience, persistence, perseverance. Three out of the four Ps. You have to be patient. It's built over a long time. But of course, through networking and online presence, you build your, uh, your trust. Again, another thing is you make sure that your company has a brand identity, a website that people can go uh, to visit. You also make sure that you have real numbers that people can call. You also make sure that you have the genuine business office place that people can visit. If you don't have a business place and you're working from home, be truthful about it. There's no point putting another address where anybody can just come to and, and find that it's unverified. All right. Uh, I think uh, by being truthful, you can actually uh, uh, um, uh, create trust. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Neill. We have another question here from Tolu. Tolu says, you, you talk about um, collaboration and um, networking for growth. Tolu is asking how, first of all, is it okay to collaborate with competitors? If yes, how does one go about it? On uh, collaboration today, because I felt we're streamlining the discussion to networking. I remember I mentioned if I had time, I will go over and over again, and I can speak for as long as we want to be here. Um, collaboration, one major key to our success is partnership as a company. Partnership is the way to go. You think like Coca-Cola, you just don't think like OK and Sons, all right? If you want to have it by yourself alone, you're not going to go far. Think about a broom. When you have a broom, what is, is it hard to break? You cannot break a broom because there are many, it's a bunch. But if it's a broomstick, it can be broken. And you, you want to leverage on partnerships because partnerships is actually what makes you stronger. You learn from partnerships. So if you network and you've met someone that is bigger than you, so come and partner with them. If you've met someone that is smaller than you and the person offers you a partnership, take it because there are lessons to be learned along the way. You don't want to be, you know, all king uh, in your own little space. And I've always said something that you, might, you may have heard somewhere else, which I said, 10% of 1 billion naira is better than 100% of nothing. And I remember one of my friends told me, look, this is why I'm doing business when you told me that thing. 10% of 1 billion naira is better than 100% of nothing. You cannot do it alone by yourself. You partner, you, you partner with competitors. We're in partnership with a lot of competitors. Matter of fact, yesterday, we declined a, a business proposition, a business proposal request from a client because we found out that one of our partners was already there. And I had to contact the partner that we found out that you're there, but because we know we're still gonna get a piece of the business, so we're pulling out. What does that do? It builds more trust that, oh, I can trust this company, I can trust this person. All right, so collaboration, be open to collaboration. Uh, thank you uh, for that beautiful question. Thank you. Okay, yes. Just link to what you just um, answered, sir. Someone was asking, yes. So you talked about getting partners. What's this asking specifically? How do you get partners into your business? Will you just throw a little more light on that? Networking. I've said it. Um, networking is a key to business growth. 
The only way you can get partners into business, your business is by being out there. I got on this stage today by through networking, all right? And if you don't network, you cannot build partnership. You cannot sit in your little office and expect people to find you. You have to be out there. And when you network, people will get to see you and read about you and reach out. Uh, again, my online presence, if you check me out on LinkedIn, you find that I'm very engaging. You engage on every social media that you are on. You engage in every group that you, you are in. You engage people in a network, in a conference that you go to. You don't go to conferences and just sit with your friends and eat with your friends alone. You go to conferences and go there and meet people that you don't know, all right? And this is the way that you can build trust. This is the way that you can invite partners. A lot of people reach out, international partners reach out to you once they see that you have an online uh, presence and a genuine one at that. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Yes, sir, talking about um, a genuine presence, our final question for the morning, we want to take it real quick. Someone's talking about um, the impact of buying followers on social media. You're talking about growing your brand. And since people buy followers, would you advise him to buy followers? What was your take on that, sir? Uh, I mean, that, that would be the, I mean, it's, it's, it's counterproductive and it's a waste of time. You, again, this is what I've just said, that people try to get rich overnight. You try to cut corners. There's no, short, there's no shortcut to business growth. Absolutely no. You can quote me anywhere. You know, you cannot expect to do the wrong things and get a, a, a good result. You're buying followers. That's been fraudulent. You want to create impression that it's not real. People buy followership, of course. You know, musicians can buy followerships. Anybody can buy followerships. Business can buy followerships. Are those followerships giving you real results? Are you just showing you that you have followers? Of what good it is, is it to have followers that don't patronize you? Of what good is it to have followers that cannot add value to you? Of what good is it to have followers that cannot give you revenue? So for me, it's a no-no. You don't buy followers. You grow your followers organically. Of course, yeah, you can hire, as you grow, you can hire online presence consultants that can help you grow your network. There's nothing, uh, you know, wrong with adding people. You know, when you add people uh, to your connection, they connect back automatically. And it takes time. You continue to grow them as you, as you, as you grow. Uh, but of course, another means of adding followership is by being engaging you engage people you just don't be there uh, docile you don't be there as someone that's just a loafer like what they call a monitoring spirit you know sorry to say but yeah um i think uh, it's a no-no to buy followers uh just try and grow them organically thank you okay then thank you very much sir thank you so much i mean so much experience so much wealth of, of experience shared in those few minutes I want to thank you for your time thank you very much sir but the thank questions you. will take a Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, someone just asked, uh, how can Kickstart help we alumni in getting companies like BOI, Smedan to access um, funding and co? Guess what? Today's event is loaded. International Beers and Kickstart Foundation have thought in advance. And we're going to have presentations from, yes, um, BOI, Smedan, and more than you know, it's a loaded event. Just stay tuned, you know. That question is going to be answered. Your, your question has already been answered because we have those presentations lined up later today. Can we give Mr. O'Neill a wonderful round of applause? Thank you, sir. Let's appreciate him. Show him some love in the comment section. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank you. That was Mr. O'Neill Lajuwami, um, the CEO of Wavelength Integrated Power Services Limited so much impact, so much value. Thank you, sir. Thank you, International Beauty Foundation. Thank you for this. Next up, in the next few minutes, we have someone great who's, who's with us here today. You know, the Kickstart Foundation is sponsored by the International Beauty Foundation. And guess what? Today we're going to be meeting someone, a very important personality in the International Beauty Foundation to tell you how important the alumni are. He created them out of his busy schedule to be here to speak to you and me today. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us today the Managing Director of the International Beers PLC. Please put your hands together as we welcome Mr. Hugo Dias Roaches. He's the Managing Director of International Beers Fund, of International Beers PLC. And he's here to join us today to share with us. He wants to see how well we are doing, how we are going. 
the next few minutes will be up. Yes, is the managing director of International Bureau's PLC. Oh, okay, fantastic. I'm told that um, it's held up briefly. We'll probably just see. Okay, I hear he was held up briefly. So while we wait for him, we'll move on with our program, which is fine. But like I say, to tell you how much, you know, Welcome on board, sir. Great to have you. Good morning. Can you hear morning, me? Sir. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Excellent. Great, great pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, just have some few words. So highly esteemed Kickstart alumni, today's speakers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the board, management and staff of International Brewers PLC, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the 2020 edition of our alumni hangout. Just to check, can you hear me well? Yes, great, thank you. So I'm honored to be addressing this great gathering for two reasons. Firstly, it's my joy to witness the apparent growth in all of you. I'm happy to see young people who apply to Kickstart Initiatives program as startup entrepreneurs evolve into forces to be reckoned within Nigeria's business environment. The second thing that gladdens my heart is the stories I have heard and read about how many of you are now mentoring and training upcoming entrepreneurs in your communities. This gesture captures the vision we had five years ago when we launched Kickstart, not just to empower young people, but to see them empowering others too. We believe in the huge potential of the Nigerian youth and are convinced that poverty and unemployment would greatly reduce if socioeconomic development is tied to economic empowerment. It's why we select young entrepreneurs from all walks of life 
who operate in diverse fields of the economy, including agriculture, manufacturing, information technology, engineering, and fashion. And with 708 beneficiaries and 571 jobs created so far, we are confident we are on the right track for delivering even more value for young, enterprising Nigerians. As a brand that never compromises on quality, we remain committed to being an integral part of the success stories that emerge from the communities we operate in. I would like to express my gratitude to the members of the International Breweries Foundation Advisory Board, led by Mr. Peter Bancoli, the management and board of International Brewers PLC are thrilled at the dedication you have all brought to bear on the Kickstart initiative. For all our alumni who are here today, you are the true stars. We are proud of your many achievements despite the grueling socioeconomic challenge. As partners on your journey, we will continue to offer as much support as we can to see that you continue to thrive in your individual ventures. I implore you to continue to impact your communities positively while encouraging young entrepreneurs within your sphere of influence to apply for the next Kickstart initiative program. As a young man, well, not so young anymore, but my guiding principle has always been dedication to my work and craft. I ask that today, you work diligently and greatness will come. Apply your best to the task at hand. You will achieve far greater than you ever dreamed. We believe a lot in you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk today. Thank you very much, sir. That was the Managing Director, International Abuse PLC. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. I mean, uh, thank you too. Said, Great opportunity. Thank you. We're, we're so glad. Thank you for your time. And the panel, the, the members are sending messages. They're saying, Thank you, sir. Another person says, Thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. They're so happy they can see you face to face and have this conversation with you. They're Same excited. Problem. Yes, they're excited. <laughs> Thank you for your time. I'm reading their messages to you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you, Sachi Debera says. Thank you. Someone says, amazing seeing you, sir. We appreciate you, sir. Their hearts are so full of love for you. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. So what do we Thank say? Thank you to my friends. Thank you, International Abuse PLC. Someone says, it's great to have you here. Thank you for your time. Irrespective of your it's a pleasure. Schedule. We are glad. Gochiku says, thank you, sir. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's an honor and my pleasure. Oh, Very lovely. Thank you so much for helping them feel <laughs> their dream. You know, it's one thing to have a dream. That means to have the enable environment, to have the capital to start. And that is what International Abuse PLC, the Kickstart Foundation, and International Abuse Foundation is doing for these young people and they are full of gratitude. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. <laughs> At this point, yes, there'll be a quick um, photo session. Yes, a quick photo session before we have the next session. So while we release the MD and Mr. O'Neill and some other distinguished personalities on site to go take their photographs, 
we will keep having our conversations. So I was just going to tell you so much about so much more we have in store for you. I mentioned to you that we have some great personality who will be joining us later on. This is just to let the participants know that it's a loaded session. We're going to be having someone from the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, and he's the head microenterprise and microenterprise startup. So for those of you in Lagos, he's somebody you should pay attention to. I mean, he'll let you know what plans the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund has for young entrepreneurs. And that is also going to be interesting. He is Mr. Fusha Labi. He will join us shortly towards the second segment of the program to share opportunities with us. Also, oh, okay, great. Okay, okay. Mrs. Alabi will join us from the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. We'll also have Dr. Friday Opara. He's from Smedan. Someone asked specifically. So you see your prayers are answered already. So much in store for you, yes. You know, we also have someone from NISA sharing with us opportunities in the agri and all that space, the, that value chain. So there's room to ask your questions. You're so privileged and, be, and blessed to be part of, this, part of this group. So much, so much, so much. They really want to see you succeed. And I hope you're ready to succeed. And if you're ready to succeed, all the mentorship, all the training that you need is available available, available, available to help you soar. You know, I know 2020 has been a rough year for some entrepreneurs, you know, from the issues with the COVID-19, affecting business growth and all of that. But in spite of all of this, in spite of all of this, we're alive and we're standing and we have the support, the support of great organizations like International Beauty's PLC, we truly are blessed. People who want to see you succeed. People who are ready to give you all you need, all the encouragement, all the support to see that your dreams in business, to see that your dreams in business come to pass and a reality. So you truly, truly, truly are blessed. Go to I see your hands. Just hang on. Hang on. We'll give you time to speak in a bit. Just hang on. Or can you go to can you type? Okay, someone is asking. Okay, no, so wants to know when the 2020 edition will begin. Not to worry before we wrap up today, you get the answer to that question. Yes, thank you. He's thinking for a friend. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. So Madina says, thank you, Kickstart Foundation. I'm blessed joining today. God bless the planners and God bless you too. I love people who are full of gratitude. You truly are blessed to be part of this group. So many people desire this opportunity, but you have been chosen, you've been selected. Yes, I see two hands up. Yes, someone is asking, how do we access loans without bottlenecks? Just hang on, that's Bukola. When we have the representatives of these organizations, after they deliver their presentations, you can ask them the questions. They'll tell you what is available, what opportunities are available, and then how to go about accessing it. So you have time to ask them your questions directly and personally, right? So just hang on. I see two people have their hands up. Yes, Chidi. Chidi, you have a question? And Ugo Chuku. Oh, I see three people. Okay, with questions. Just hang on. We'll call you one by one. And we'd also like to know what your journey has been on, on this, uh, uh, um, so far for your trainings, and you were unleashed to go forth and to start your businesses. So I'd like to see comments on what the journey has been like. What has the year been like for your business? Thank you, Adio Yopayemi. Thank you so much. I appreciate that feedback. Thank you. Yes. So please send me feedback, 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 feedback. What has business been like for you since you left the bootcamp and you went on to start? your own business. How has 2020 been for you? Please send me feedback, feedback, feedback on what your year has been like. Yes, Ebenezer, you're welcome. We can see you. Thanks for joining. Yes, feedback, please. What has 2020 been like for you in business? 
What challenges have you faced? How have the lessons you learned from the Kickstart program, mentorship program, helped you so far in business? I need feedback, feedback. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. I'm all yours for the morning. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Miami says business has been great, but the challenges are too much. Oh, wow. Let's know some of the challenges. You can talk about them. Yes, what has? First of all, I'd like to know, Miami, what kind of business you run and then some of the challenges you have had to face so far. So please, let's hear from you. Feedback, feedback. Tell me your name, the kind of business you run, and the challenges, specific challenges. Oh, fantastic. Someone says, it wasn't easy from March till July. I kicked off. Okay, so Madina says, thank you for your time. The journey has been easy. Okay, it has not been easy, especially this year. There has been so many challenges. Yes, let's know, let's know. What were the specific challenges? You know. <laughs> Any specific challenges you want to share with us? I know 2020 has been and it, it, it's been one whole year <laughs> for entrepreneurs. For some people, it's been slow. Oh, so Madina says, um, thank you for your time. The journey has been easy. Okay, it has not been easy, especially this year. Thank God we are facing them squarely. Chidi says, I'm ever grateful for the grant I received from this foundation. I'm a 2007 beneficiary and my business is doing well. Wow, that's great to hear from you, Chidi, that you're doing so well. He says, to International Bureau's Foundation and Kickstart Program, keep transforming lives. Thank you so much, Chidi, for that feedback. Yes. Someone said it wasn't easy from March till July. I kicked off from September till now. Great, awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes, we want to hear from you. Yes, okay, Kayode says, for those of us in the education business, this year has been so challenging. We have done so little, but it has given us more reasons and ideas to develop the business and increase its scope. Fantastic, Kayode, fantastic, fantastic. The truth about business, you need to keep innovating. You need to keep reinventing yourself. So challenges come, you think of new ways to get your products out. You know, so I, I can understand the educational space. It's really been challenging with schools going off and on. But like he says, it helped him to begin to re to innovate and to come up with new ideas. Because as much as there were challenges, there were also new opportunities. For example, online learning. Everyone is online today now. And that's because as a result of the COVID, physical meetings had to be restricted. So where there are challenges, there are also opportunities. Yeah, I see Tolu Lokwe saying she's an event planner. 2020 has been a challenging year from event postponements. Oh, I can imagine cancellation and refunds. Very low income from COVID, from the impact of COVID-19. Surviving though, yes, that reinventing became inevitable and we can only get better. That's the spirit we look at. Thank you so much for that. That's the spirit. We don't give up. We reinvent, we move. Yes, fantastic. 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 Gochuku says, thank you, International Beauty Foundation, for making my dreams come true in 2018. I am forever grateful. Fantastic. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Yes, 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 yes. I love. Fantastic. Great, great, great. So we'll come back with the comments. It's time to move on. It's time. There's so much in store. We're going for another explosive session. Trust me on this one. It's going to be super, super, super explosive. We have a great woman next up who's going to be sharing with us from her wealth of experience. She's going to be speaking to us on using storytelling to grow your network and increase brand visibility. Using storytelling to grow your network and increase brand visibility. Just a little about our speaker for the morning, Mrs. Helen O'Philly, 
is a consummate brand management expert with diverse exposure in banking, finance, resource, and brand management with 25 years hands-on experience. So 25 years hands-on experience, we're going to be hearing from her. She was in banking, after which she moved on to other sectors. She's currently a director in Advert Pro PLC, a partner at Highton Consulting. Highton Consulting is a learning and capacity development consulting firm, specifically focused on capacity building and career development while assisting organizations to unlock the potentials of their people. Helen is also the chairperson of Women and Young Entrepreneurs Network, a nonprofit organization focused on empowerment, skill acquisition, capacity development, and mentorship for women and young entrepreneurs in various communities across Nigeria. Helen Ophelia will be speaking to us once again on using storytelling to grow your network and increase brand visibility. Trust this is someone you need to listen to. There's so much talk about storytelling. So how do you use storytelling to grow your brand? Ladies and gentlemen, join me this morning as I welcome Helen Ophelia. Please make her welcome. You're welcome, ma'am. You have the platform. As usual, have your notes, books, and barrows handy for that because there'll be room for questions. Um, and I'm glad that we're all here and we're all uh, listening to this. We'll be talking about using storytelling um, and networking to grow your brand's visibility. A lot of us have heard about storytelling and people wonder what is in storytelling. And storytelling is something that we've done even when we were kids. We grew up with our parents knowing about stories. A lot of us have had stories about how the tortoise did one thing or the other. And parents have used storytelling to inculcate values in their children over time. And so now storytelling has become a major part of building your brand visibility. It has been said that when you use storytelling for your networking and brand visibility purposes, there is a high chance that you'll get a conversion of up to 48 to 50%. That is what it has been said. Why? Every time you go for a networking session or you go for a lecture, sorry, you discover that they have a whole lot of theories but what actually remains in your mind and what actually goes back with you are the stories that are shared at that point. Um, our last speaker, um, O'Neill Lajuwami, he talked a lot about networking and at the end of it, he shared his story. And when he did that, it was totally awesome. And so we'll look at a quote that Steve Jobs has, he said, that the most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. And the storyteller, he sets the vision, he sets the values, and he also sets an agenda. And it affects the entire generation to come. In 2005 at Stanford University, when he gave a commencement speech, he had um, a three point speech. One was connecting the dots, the first point. The second point was, love and loss. And the third point he had was death. In that three uh, section of his speech to graduates, graduates at uh, Stanford University, Steve Jobs told his entire life story, right up to the fact that he had cancer and how he was having to deal with it and his concerns about death. Now, way, way after Steve Jobs has passed on, his followership and his brand has continued to grow astronomically. People are constantly following after what he's done. People are following over his quotes. People are constantly discussing Steve Jobs. That is the power of storytelling. Storytelling actually does motivate you. Now, in terms of networking, networking is marketing and marketing involves marketing yourself, your uniqueness and what you stand for. And so when you tell a story about yourself, it also helps to market yourself and also helps 
to state what your uniqueness is all about. So it's crucial that you start to think about your business in that line. Now we have a definition for storytelling. Storytelling has been defined as the process where you convey your brand's essence to your audience, you know, so that you can build emotional connection. Emotional connection is the key to selling your goods, is the key to selling your product in any market. Once you're able to build that emotional connection, then it is easier for you to be able to literally sell your business. What differentiates what you sell? I mean, why should somebody buy your products vis-a-vis -vis buying from another person? It's not just the uniqueness of your product. It also ties into the emotional connection. When a person has an emotional connection with you, it is easier for them to look out for your product and want to buy your product. And so, for example, when we talk about emotional connection in storytelling, when I tell you my story um, and then you see what I do, you now say, oh, I no longer become just a name to you. I actually become a person, relatable person. And you think about me, you feel, oh, I know her. If we have one of, um, there, there was one of the ladies that came during one of the sessions that we had. And um, while she was at the session, her child kept giving her a lot of stress. And I was literally very concerned. So I said, somebody should help take that child off her so that she could concentrate. But she couldn't concentrate. And after the session, I called her. I said, what is the problem? And she told me, she had just lost her husband. She was all alone. There was nobody to leave the child with, but she needed to be at this program and she didn't have a choice. Of course, you know that automatically I felt empathy for her because she shared her story with me. And she went on to tell me how she got to the level that she was in her business and almost about to lose it because of the death of her husband and how to manage with her children. And so, we organized a nanny to take care of her kids, giving her the freedom to be able to work. At the end of that program, a lot of people were asking for her cards. What are you doing now? What are you doing? How can we help? Because they now know her story. They want to support. They want to look at what she's doing. And once what you're doing is excellent, it's unique, people gravitate towards it because of the emotional connection. So it grows a loyal customer base for you. It allows you to tell your audience where you started from. How did you start? A lot of us come out and we're like very successful. You see some people, they're doing very well. If they share for you how they started, their humble beginnings, you now start to realize that this is something that you can do. I remember um, the gentleman that was behind, um, I think that was uh, Sheyi Abolaji Wilson's. Wilson is a drink that a lot of us buy. It's um, all over the place. When Sheyi started, it was from uh, Convenant University and he had only 2,000 Naira. He was squeezing out fresh juice and pouring it into a cup and students in between classes will come take a drink and go back, come take a drink and go back. And uh, Sheyi came from America to do youth service here, to get to know Nigeria and everything. And he felt, look, he could do this business. And he kept at it. Um, after a while, Sheyi didn't have the money to continue. The woman next door to him actually gave, uh, next to him on the open space, gave Sheyi more space to be able to um, keep doing his orange juice. Now, let's cut to today. Today, um, Sheyi is doing 600,000 liters of freshly squeezed orange juice and he has 1,200 locations. And that is just from 2,000 Naira business that he started. Yes, he had some investors. He had people who came in along the line when they now started tasting their juice. When I learned about Sheyi's story, when next I walked into a shop, I was looking for Wilson's. <laughs> now, most people will do the same thing. The moment they hear your story, the next thing is, they want to know how they got to that point. And that's the same thing with even the gentleman behind Paystack. 
that is a story that when you hear it, you'll wonder how did they start this? And there's so many businesses like that. So you have to talk about where you started from, where you are and where you intend to be. And how important all these are to the process. The consumers, they constantly associate the stories with your brand. So the benefits of using storytelling is that it becomes unforgettable. It provides a positive relationship. And at the end of it, it gives you an emotive value. When we talk about unforgettable, I'll just uh, share something with you. Remember the ad where we had, um, we had um, Saka? I'm sure that um, all of you looking at it would remember that ad, how Saka ported. And Saka was, um, you know, facing a particular, um, it, was, it, was, it was a brand for a particular brand. And then the next thing, Saka now moved on to, um, I think, MTN. And when the ad started, it was his back. And then he was telling the story of how he started, what he's been doing. And then suddenly, and he now turned and said, I don't port. So that is the story of Saka. And that is the story of using an unforgettable emotional content to create an ad. And it touched a whole lot of people. It really touched them. They were very excited. And a lot of people were now uh, thinking about potting. They kept trying to pot. They kept trying to you know, move themselves from one of the, um, um, what's it called, the, the network to the other because of that. We also remember, uh, talking about positive relationships, you remember the Airtel data is life. When Gozimusu was there with Iarimbo, I believe that's her name. And that story, Airtel has drawn that story to, has, has actually milked the story to what it is today. It started with them having children, uh, having a baby, sharing rooms for the mothers, it went on. And in just that story, there is a whole lot of positive relationships. The young man is a Yoruba boy, the lady is an Igbo lady, and both of them got married. So you see the Igbo culture, you see the Yoruba culture. So this told a story throughout and it just kept on talking about the story. So that Airtel life, uh, data is life, is an advert that is telling a story over and over again that has remained in our consciousness and in our mindset. Then the other thing that you look at is emotional value. I don't know if a lot of you remember uh, the peak milk ad where uh, Kanu Wanko's son was talking about all his father had done. It's, a, it's an old peak milk ad. And as he talked about the story, he was sharing the album of his father, the accolades his father had had. And Kanu went on from there to also now say that so he was in shock when he realized that he had a heart problem and he couldn't go on. Everybody felt very bad when Kanu came up with that story or where we heard he had a heart problem. But Kanu went on to continue doing his stuff the way he called. Now, that story alone increased the sales for Peak massively. It increased the sales for Peak massively. So what is a storytelling process? What is the storytelling process? The storytelling process involves four points. We say, first of all, you have to know your audience. What is your audience? Who is your audience? You have to define your core message. You have to determine the channels you intend telling the story, and then you have to develop a storyboard. To create a story now is no longer just, you know, and by mistake or by chance. It's got to be intentional. We all have stories. A lot of us are in businesses and we know how we got to that point. So when you're talking about your audience, who do you think wants to hear your story? Who will benefit and respond the strongest? So in order to create a compelling story, 
you need to understand your readers. Who are they? Your followers, who are they? And um, you also have to define your core message. So your story, is it about selling your product or is it about raising funds? That is also very important for you to know. Or is it about advocating for an issue? What is the point of your story? You also have to determine the channels you intend telling your story to. And when you do that, it helps you to be able to say, okay, this is how the story should be crafted. A story that is meant for uh, LinkedIn is very professional, very straight to the point. The story that is meant for Facebook has a whole lot more to it. Then to develop a storyboard, when you determine the kind of story you're telling, you have to figure out the objective of that story. It could be to incite action. It could be to tell people about yourself, to build an emotional connection with you. Now, we talk about, so we've talked about the process of storytelling. Now let's talk about networking for brand and visibility, for brand growth and visibility. O'Neill has spoken a lot on networking previously. So we'll just look at the basics where it concerns us. So networking, as he has said, is a process aimed at developing connections and connections with other brands and customers, helping your business to grow so that you build a mutually beneficial system. So that's what it is. And networking, again, is one of the most effective ways for you to create and tell your brand story. The moment you have created your story and built it, and then you now have an uh, occasion to network with people and to talk. So you're able to have a direct interaction. You, you can have very short stories, you can have long stories, you can have whatever the, the, the ten of those stories are. Now, what it helps you to do is by the time the, you give somebody your card and you talk a little bit about your story, you're not just a name on a card. You become a face to remember and your story sits well with them as well as on the card that you have given them. So networking also enables you to interact with various experts, like he has said, within your core business area. And that will provide a holistic outlook for your brand identity story. So you need to give value to be able to build a strong network. So in today's ultra connected world, networking is more essential to professional success than it's ever been before. So you have to craft your story so that as you're networking, your story is going along with that network. Networking enables you to forge powerful connections like he has said and boost your professional value and it's like a game. It's more like a game. In particular, a game that is closely integrated with the powerful tenets of storytelling. So when you do that, you are building that connection and you are also having a very good relationship with those you're networking with. And networking is definitely a surefire way to grow your business. When you tell your story in a way that genuinely, genuinely connects others, you find that your business just takes off. It just literally gallops, you know? And so you have to craft your business story. The ways to do that is you create a three sentence story. Like I said, you can use your work, what you do on a daily basis to build a story, how you prepare your juices, how you prepare um, your day to start out. You can use that to create a story. Social media is an awesome conduit for your stories. Always focus on relationships rather than transaction. It's important for people to realize that you're not just about making the money. Yes, making the money is critical, but when you have a relationship and you're building relationship, what happens is that people now come to you much more than you know, and they're willing to do more transactions with you. We have also talked about following up to sustain your connections. And I'm sure that at the last time, it was extremely well digested when O'Neill said that to us. And the key takeaways for us right now is storytelling is an art. We all have stories to tell. Make it an art and create your story. Create a short story, create a long story. Networking enables you to forge powerful connections and helps you to boost your professional value. Stories bring people together and they inspire action and response. When you add the storytelling to the networking, your business just goes straight up. Your brand visibility increases, 
People get to know you and they get to know your business. On a final note, remember, focus on relationships over transaction. Thank you very much. Oh, that was awesome, 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 awesome. Thank you very much, Mrs. Ophili. And I love the way she ended. Focus on relationships. Focus on relation. That's something that has gone on through the presentation. The first speaker said, you know, it's not just about going out there to grab from your customers. Let there be connections. Show them that you care. Today we're hearing, we're hearing now again the second presentation. Focus on relations. I want to believe we're learning. Thank you so much, ma'am. This is 25, over 25 years experience. She's had to squeeze into just 30 minutes. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. As usual, the floor is open for questions, contributions, feedback. So the art of storytelling. Yeah, we have feedback. Gozia says, thank you, Ma, you are appreciated. <laughs> While we wait for questions, that was awesome. Thank you so much, Ma, that's with Vima. Tululokwe emphasized what Ms. Zofili said, focus on relationships over transactions. Yes, we have the floor open for questions. You want to speak, if you raise your hands, we can let you speak. So Madina says, thank you so much, Ma, for your contributions. Awesome, awesome, awesome. With stories, every business has a story. And everybody's story is different and unique. Yes, I see a few hands raised up. Fantastic. So we'll let Chidi. Chidi, can we take your question? Let's hear you, Chidi. Chidi, oh, please go oh, ahead. Oh. Okay, so then the, Chidi, can you hear me? While we wait for Chidi, we have a question here. Gochuku. Gochuku says, how do you initiate the storytelling when your audience are focused on your products and service marketing? Gochuku says, how do you initiate the storytelling when your audience is focused on your product and service marketing? Yes, ma'am, that's the first question. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Gochuku. Um, your target audience are focused on your products and um, your marketing, yes. But however, when you tell them the story of how you... ...they pick up... I told you about Wilson's. I told you that a lot of people have... Wilson, Steve Wilson's products in the stores. Most people don't buy. Some people didn't buy. Some people do. Kids love it. The bottle is different. Now, Wilson started talking about his story as he started selling. And he told us how he started, how he created the bottle, why he has a square bottle, how he arrived at the name Wilson. So by the time you're seeing the bottle or the juice, what he's telling you is, wow, this is Wilson. So this is the drink that this gentleman has been talking about. This drink must be different. And he's done so well with it. So your story ties into that particular product that you are selling or the service that you're selling. We remember him from going to Convenant University, trying to sell it in cups, squeezing out fresh juices and putting them in cups. However, because of the fact that he was not able to continue that way, he now expanded. And as he's telling his story, in fact, he shared at a point how he went to a particular office uh, for six years just so that they would carry his product. And eventually he broke through and they carried his product. So it motivates you, it drives you. People look at your product and they see your brand story. So that is what you need to do. 
So you have to start now to start initiating. How did you start? How did you start that business? What business are you into? How did you start it? How did you come up with the idea? What's the idea behind it? Those are the things that you need to ask yourself and use that to create your brand story so that when they are seeing your product, they are remembering your story and they add more value to your product at the end of the day. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Just to emphasize what you said, um, Gauzier sent a message that relationships matter. I'm in business basically because of relationships I build with my clients. They are now loyal customers and doing everything to refer me to their friends, families, and colleagues. This is fantastic. Just to emphasize what we say, relationship matters. And when you tell your stories, your clients go on and promote your story to other people because they, 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 they connect to you better. Madame said, um, Zophili said, um, stories help you connect, build an emotional connect with your audience. So when you tell your story, they go on and keep telling your stories. Yes, we have more feedback here. Chinaza says, thank you, Ma. That was an awesome presentation. Okay, Ms. Zofili, I have a question for you. Someone says, I'm into local textile production. How can I initiate storytelling into my products? For someone Again. who deals with local, with local textile, how can he start? Bring storytelling into his products. Local tech textile production. Okay, fine. Local textile production. How did he start doing local textile production? What led him to local textile production? What were his thoughts? Was it easy to start a local textile production? What sort of local textile production is he in? How was he able to convince people to believe him that he could do it and do it well? Was he trained somewhere? Was he mentored somewhere? So these are some of the questions. You, so when you're telling your story, you need to actually sit down yourself and think about your process of how you started. Your humble beginnings is what we call it in storytelling. Your humble beginnings. Who taught you? How did you start? And after how you started, how, have it, how has it gone on? And then what are you doing now? How has it grown? How do your customers feel when they see uh, your product? Are they happy? The day that you're able to meet one or two of your customers and tell them your story of how you started, how you learned the process of, um, of, um, of making this local fabrics. By the time you tell them your story and everything, the next time they're buying your fabric or your product, they are actually seeing the story of all the suffering you've gone through of your humble beginnings inside that. If I share my story with you, of how I, after doing banking 25 years and when to start doing um, a brand, branding and advert pro and all that, most people will say it's not true. I had people tell me you can't do it. You can't be from banking and then cross over. What I did was a, what you call a total reinvent and rebrand myself. I took myself from doing core banking and then moved on to um, doing advertising and brand consulting and building emotional connections. I had people that said to me, Mama H, you can't do it. Wow, no, you can't. <laughs> the hustle is too much. How are you going to start now? Where would you start from? And every time I share the story of where I started from and the very first clients that listened to me and believed me and gave me my first job, I still celebrate it till today. And every time I go to talk, and that's another thing about storytelling, make sure you put yourself out there, make sure you talk about your business. Every opportunity you have to build yourself, to talk, even if it's for free, please talk. Even if you're not being paid anything, talk, share your experience. The more people hear about you, the more they look out for your product, the more they hear about your product. 
Even if they don't know your product, but they know you. The moment you leave that stage and you finish talking, somebody will ask, who is that person? What does he do? What kind of job is he into? They say, oh, he, he manages a local fabric production. Now they say, which fabric? Where is the shop? Because what? You have added value. So whether you're talking to a bunch of uh, students in a secondary school or you're sharing in church, wherever it is, do not hesitate to share your story. And definitely it will impact on your business. It will impact on your brand visibility. It will impact on your product. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. It does. Thank you so much, ma'am. Someone asks, can pictures and videos be used to tell stories? Sorry. Can pictures and videos, I mean, are stories just about words? Or can pictures and videos be used to tell oh, stories? Yes. yes. We Nigerians, we as a people, we're very visual. We are very visual. We like pictures. We like, we like videos. We like those. So you can put in, um, even on your Instagram, okay, there, there's, a, there's a lady that has a microfinance bank that has been asking me to consult for her. And then what did she do? She, she kept talking about, uh, you know, we give loans, we give loans. And I said, no, that will not work. I want videos of the customers that you have given a loan to. I want them to share a video of where they were when they started with you, when you gave, because there were people that she had given funding for five years, for six years, off and on. So where was their business when you started doing business with them? And then where is it today? So those people shared those videos and she posted them on Instagram. So it became more relatable. So instead of just talking about advertising, we learned at so -so and so rate, contact us for your SME loans or your micro loans. What she has done is what we did for her was to basically create a story for almost every one of her clients. So people will now hear from the clients directly that taking a loan from so -so and so, this was how it impacted my business. This is what it took me from stage A to stage B. So of course, pictures and videos, they do a fantastic job. Okay then. Thank you so much, Mrs. Helen Ophili. Um, at this point, I mean, I know you have so much to pour, but we need to move on. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so Thank much, you. so much, so Thank much, you. so much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank Thanks you, so yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, for those whose questions we didn't get to, just keep sending your questions. We'll find a way to take them at some point in the conversation. We're moving on now, full gear. I told you there's so much today. It's a packed program. It's an experience, you know, something that you will leave and you have a lot to think about, we leave and act on. Most importantly, you have enough to act on after this. Yes, now we're going to the sharing sessions. We're talking about opportunities now. You know, someone asked earlier, and I say your answer is here, opportunities. What other opportunities are available for entrepreneurs? First up, we're going to be hearing, we have a presentation from NISAL. NISAL is a Nigerian incentive-based risk sharing system. They focus on the Nigeria's agribusiness niche. So if that is your niche, you're in the right place. And we have a team lead from the NISAL Microfinance Bank. They have a microfinance bank that deals with people in the agribusiness space. So if that is your niche, you need to listen to, listen and listen and listen. Get your papers, get your virus. After this, there'll be room for questions. Join me as I welcome Mr. Joseph Abiola, who will share with us on NISAL and the opportunities they have. Mr. Joseph Abiola, you're welcome, sir. You have the floor. Mr. Joseph Abiola from NISO will be sharing with us opportunities from the NISO Microfinance Bank. Get your papers and your buyers take notes. 
take notes, take notes, take notes, because there'll be room for questions. Someone asked earlier, how do we access these loans? This is your time. Because he will tell you what's available and how to access them. So get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. It's getting hotter in here. We're still on to the Kickstart Alumni Workshop. And our theme is networking for business growth. Networking for business growth. Networking for business growth. That's what we're discussing. It's all about you, the alumni. Every person who has passed through the Kickstart program. And the idea is to check up on you to see how you're doing and see what ways we can help to alleviate the challenges you've faced in business. 2020 has been an interesting year for entrepreneurs. But all the same there, like we agreed earlier on, where the challenges increase, opportunities also increase. It's also been a year where businesses have had to innovate, to rethink their processes, to meet the demands, the daily demand, the emerging challenges and possibilities. So don't give up. Kickstart is here to help you, International Breweries, Foundation and PLC is here to help you to ensure that you succeed, that that dream comes to reality. So think up all your questions, think through your year, every challenge you have had and you need clarity, this is the forum. Bring up all the challenges, let's trash them together. Let's have conversations around them and see how we can spur each other to go and keep getting better, bigger, stronger, Fantastic. So the stage is set now. Once again, I'll call on Mr. Joseph Abiola. He's the team lead for the NYSO Microfinance Bank. Sir, you have the stage. My name is Abiola Joseph. You're welcome, I'm sir. Team. I'm the team lead, NYSO Microfinance Bank, Marina Branch. Uh, I just want to take us through some of the things we do in terms of uh, product offering and the uh, services. Actually, NYSA Microfinance Bank is new, but the giant stride we have been able to have within a period of one year we've been in existence. Uh, the testimony is all out there on the numbers of people we have been able to, you know, disburse loans to, and uh, how we have been able to add value seriously to the economy. So I will take us through a view of those uh, uh, products. The first one we have is, uh, we call it Agnes Loan. Agnes Loan is the acronym for Agreed Business Small and Medium Scale Enterprise Investment Scheme. This loan is meant for various categories of businesses. And I will take my time to talk about those categories of businesses so that people could have, they will have awareness and before they call us for, before they call us for, you know, give them known, they will know whether they actually qualify or not. We deal, this admin known deal with all areas of agriculture and agro allied processing, art and entertainment, automobile services, fashion and dress making, catering and event management, career and delivery services, creative industry, apparel and textile. ICT, information communication technology, I meant, cottage industry, media, publishing, telecommunications, hospitality, air services, welding and fabrication, animal husbandry, cosmetics, beauty and makeup artistry, electrical and electronics, POP and tiny, carpentry, masonry, you know. This is about 22 different areas of businesses. Anybody that is handling this kind of business is qualified to apply for admin loan. How does it work? The way it works is that, first and foremost, the applicant must attend an EDI training, entrepreneurship development institution. We have many of them around, all over the Federation. The training is just 10,000 Naira. Then 
the person will be trained within a period of one week. That is how to manage business, how to manage risk, how to sustain your business in the long run. After the training, the next thing is that the applicants will apply for the loan on our you know, uh, website. We have, a, we have a portal for that. The terms and condition of the loan is that the highest amount that can be accessed is 10 million naira. 10 million naira is the cap. Now, for that 10 million, is payable within a maximum period of seven years. Seven years is the max, maximum to repay the loan. Moratorium could vary between six to six months to one year. And then we also request for a guarantor in form of, um, you know, collateral. Now, another way of securing the loan is that for all the equipment that is bought with the loan, we get the original receipt and the serial numbers of the equipment in order to register them on a national credit registry. This is to ensure that um, the customer actually uses the loan for the purpose for which the loan is given. Now, for other product that we have, we have ABP, that is Anchor Borrower Program. Anchor Borrower Program is a little bit complex, but I will simplify it. This is how it works. You have a group of farmers, for instance, who are looking for off taker that will buy their products. But they need some seed money, for instance, to plant, to clear, to buy fertilizers, and also to pay the laborers that work on the farm. So let's say, for instance, uh, Nigerian flour mill, they use the uh, grain for their products. So they become the anchor for probably, uh, you know, about 4,000, 5,000 farmers who are in need of, uh, let's say, less than 300,000 naira each of them. So Nigerian, uh, you know, farming will come up and say, okay, fine, we are ready to guarantee, not only that we will buy or take all the products that these farmers are going to produce, we will also guarantee that we buy the product of them so that there won't be any, you know, leftover. So the agreement will be entered into with the bank, the, you know, anchor, and also, and the, you know, the farmers. So what happened is that as soon as harvest starts, the banks and the anchor ensure that nobody, the, none of the farmers is able to sell the produce to any other person except the, you know, Nigerian flour mill. And the loan is paid through Nigerian flour mill and the rest of the you know income is shared between Nigerian flour mill and you know and the and the farmers that is a level of private courtship then it will also come in form of from the government let's say the Lagos state government want to be the anchor for over 20,000 farmers what they do is they approach the bank they guarantee the loan they make sure that they offtake all the products all the produce you know and ensure that the loan is paid back. Now it's much more complex than that, but that is the simplest, you know, explanation to that. Then there is a new product um, that is coming up, it has already started. That is the, between the synergy between the Federal Ministries of Youth and Sports and NISA Microfinance Bank. Now it is called Nigerian Youth Investment Fund. Federal government has set aside 75 billion Naira investment fund to be accessed between 2020 and 2023 in order to finance youth-owned enterprises. Youth is described in this category as between the ages of 18 and 35. The way it works is that for youth that have already registered their business, they have formal business they are doing, they can access up to 3 million Naira. For those who don't have formal business, they are just doing, you know, trade. They can access up to 250,000 Naira with a tenor of five years and a possible moratorium of one year, that is 12 months. The interest rate is 5% all inclusive. I forgot to tell us about the interest rate for admins. 
admin's interest rate is 9%. Okay? But for the four year, first year, we take 4% as administrative charges, and the remaining 5% will be paid on the loan annually for the first year. But at the beginning of the second year, it reverts to, you know, 9%. Now, for the Nigerian Youth Investment Fund, I said the tenure is five years. Interest rate is 5% all inclusive. Now, anyone with unpaid loan history in any banks in Nigeria will automatically not qualify for this loan. What do I mean by unpaid loan? It doesn't mean that the person has exposure with another bank. What we are saying is that if the loan has been abandoned for a reasonable period of time, that person will not be able to access this uh, loan. He, will, he or she will have to offset the obligation to other banks. Also, for this loan, there is no collateral in place. But what we rely on is global standing order, as it is put in place by the federal government as of July this year. What Global Standing Order stands for is a form of set-off agreement between the applicant and the bank. And this is how it works. If you are away us and you, you, you fail to, you know, to pay your loan, then you have balances in other banks. The, the, the law you know, permits the bank to access your balances in other banks and use it to offset the loan that is due with us. Also, all the movable assets are going to be registered on National Collateral Registry with the, uh, with the serial numbers. This is to enable us to do effective recovery in case there is default. NISA Microfinance Bank is less than two years. We started effectively around June last year. But as we speak, in my branch alone, we've been able to disburse close to three billion to various sectors of the economy. And the testimonies we are having from various people is, a, you know, testify to the fact that the scheme has come to stay. Thank you very much. If there is any question, I'm ready to entertain. All right. okay. Thank you very much, sir, for that presentation. We have questions, <laughs> questions ready and waiting. Yes, sir. Somebody asked, and he says, I have applied for the CBN supported Axmis loan from the NYSO Microfinance Bank. No interview yet. Can you please help? So he has applied for the Ask Smith loan and he hasn't gotten any feedback yet. So he wants to know what's next. I, I have anticipated that question. Thank you very much. <laughs> what happens is that we do the recommendation for the loan and we sent it to the regulatory authorities for approval. But you agree with me that with the rates people are applying for the loan, there is no way everybody will be attended to at the same time. If not, we are going to have chaos. So what we do is that these applications are taken in batches. As I'm talking to you, we are doing a lot in respect of that. What will happen is that Please let the applicant exercise patience. There is no indication that he successfully, you know, spurred. And it's good enough that the person has been, you know, interviewed. The next thing is for us to get approval from the regulatory authorities and also disburse to the account of the customer. Thank you very much. Okay, then. Thank you very much, sir. The next question. The next question is, Someone is asking, Akiola, how can a farmer move forward with the challenges in Nigeria? So what hope do you have for young farmers, please? What message do you have for young farmers? Incidentally, we, we are dealing with a lot of farmers, you know, whether poultry farming, fish farming, crop farming, and a host of others. The, what we've experienced in the last one year is that with the exception of where you have security challenges, where you have maybe S-men attack or probably bandit issues in the northern parts of the country, all the farmers that we have given them, they are doing very well. And what we are also doing is to offer free advisory services for those who want to add value to their, you know, crop. We are teaching them how to add value, how to, you know, process those crops to make sure that 
you know, they are able to add value to what they are doing. Thank you very much. Farmers are doing very well under this scheme. Okay, then. Someone wants to have an idea of how long it takes for the Axmis loan to be approved and disbursed. Thank you very much. That question is reverberating again. Now, <laughs> the way it works is this. Um, the bank, as I speak, has just 51 branches all over Nigeria. We are going to add another 60 branches to it by December this year. Why we are agreeing all of that is to ensure that we increase our spread and also take pressure away from the existing branches. No matter how much we try to fast track the approval and disbondment of this loan, we have just limited number of staff members who can handle all the applications coming from all over Nigeria. So what I will advise is that currently, we are supposed to be able to ramp everything up from the point of you know, application to disbursement and draw them within a period of one month. Then you know, it, it takes a lot of time to get approval and as well as calling if, for instance, let me say this, if we have approval for let's say 5,000 uh, applicants, to process all of that and do their drawdown can and one month because all of those people have to bring their invoices. The invoices have to pass through the bank vendor. The bank vendor will, you know, send the, uh, you know, their phone to their suppliers and all of that. Then we have to do what we call KYC. To do KYC on 5,000 people is not a tea party. But as we, you know, increase our branch uh, network, you discover that the process becomes faster. I recognize and understand the fact that a lot of Nigerians who have applied, especially those who have been interviewed, and you know, I can testify that I've been doing interview almost every fortnight since January. So it's a whole lot of people. They will continue to disburse, you know, every day to ensure that the ones we have approval for, we're able to push them out. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Joseph Abiola from NYSEL Microfinance Bank. Still so many questions about the time frame, but I believe the questions have been answered. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the explanations you have made for us. Um, we'll move on real quick to the next session where we'll be talking about brand success stories. We have two distinguished alumni who have done really well and would like them to share their stories with us. We Sophie talked about the power of storytelling. So we're gonna put that into practice right here and now. And they have five minutes each to tell us about the success they're beneficiaries of this program. And they wanna share their stories with us. I see more questions coming in, just keep them coming. Keep the questions coming. Keep the questions coming, keep the questions coming. Keep the questions coming. So we're going to be hearing from two different um, alumni of the Kickstart program. The one will be Onyechi Eric Mba, the CEO and founder of Orchard Blends. Next up, we'll be hearing from Tony Sotande, CEO Print Captain. CEO Print Captain, so two alumni who have done well, will be sharing their stories with us, their stories. So for those who are still wondering, you know, how do you tell your brand success stories? You know, how do you use your stories to increase visibility? For example, we have over 50 participants now, and these two people are going to be sharing their story. This is visibility for them. So you see how every time you tell a story before an audience, Ms. Ophelia said it doesn't matter who the audience is. It might be a group of secondary school students, it might be other entrepreneurs, it might be family, it might be friends, but every time you have an opportunity, you should speak up and share your, and what's your story? It's simple, how did you start? What did you get the inspiration from? What challenges have you had? How did you overcome them? Have you had to innovate? Have you had to struggle? What are your success, your high moments? The low, that's simple what the story is. And it helps you build a connection. For example, after today, we're going to so know, we're going to know so much about these two businesses that we're going to listen to their stories. 
and we'll be able to connect. We see their brands anywhere. It's so we can say, oh, I know this person. I heard their story at the alumni hangout. That's what stories do for you. So ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure this afternoon to call on the first person for five minutes. I'd like to call on Oyinyechi Eric Mba, the CEO and founder of Orchard Lens. You have the floor now. Let's hear your success story. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My good name afternoon. is Eric Oyinyechi I am the CEO of Orchard Blends, a healthy treat, smoothie, and fresh juice company here in Lagos, Nigeria. It's been an exciting journey anyways. It's been very exciting. But starting off, I relocated to Lagos basically because I got married and I was heavily pregnant. I left a white collar job. I was then working with Irish Africa West, located to Lagos, and I was stuck in the house. I was very good at making smoothies and fresh juice. I would invite my neighbors free of charge. Everybody knew me around the house that I can make smoothies for free. You would drink, you would enjoy and go to your house. That was how um, generous I was with it. And I started in a corner shop selling smoothies, fresh juice, fruit salad beside the restaurant. And that was how the business grew. About two years into the business, I became pregnant with my second child and the business had to take a slow pace again. But by this time I was better equipped, I was knowledgeable, I've done a lot, lots of research, I've asked questions, I've gone, you know, I've covered every area I think I should cover. But with the fundings coming in, there was family to take a bit from it and little, little bits. And you know how Nigeria economy can not be funny. The pineapple you bought today for 15 naira is 200 naira tomorrow. So I was faced with that kind of challenge. Um, eventually, that was in 2019, I was sitting down in the room one night. I was tired, I was exhausted. I was thinking of out of what other things can I do? And for the first time I, in a long while, I also invested in, that, in buying data and stayed online going through Instagram. And then I saw the Kickstart advert on the sponsor ads. And I said, if only I can try this. It's a Nigeria thing. Let's try, let's see if it can happen. And then I applied. I called my husband, I said, honey, I saw something wrong. He said, they lose nothing in doing it, just try. And I think that was my push. I applied. And a month later, I got a mail. You need to see the way I danced that day. I was really excited. I felt as though a new door is being opened to me and it's only me that can decide, should I walk in or should I walk out? It was all in my hands. And then the training, um, I got the invite, filled the forms and went for the training. Lo and behold, going for that training, I had a, a six month old child about five months, and she had mild metatos adduction at that time. So I had to, she was on POP. And getting for the tra to the training, it was like, how do I cope trying to take care of a child and at the same time learning? Plus, there are going to be lots of single people there. <laughs> so it's me, my baby, and the world at that time. So I went in for the training. We are about five mothers in the 2019 boot camp here in Lagos. And we had to pursue the dream. We had to pursue everything. Well, myself and my roommates, roommates there in Tosin, we told ourselves, if not for anything, we have to win this and show the world that being a mother does not restrict you from pursuing your dreams. Our businesses were a bigger story for us. And that was how the whole training, the whole boot camp, we participated. And eventually we did win. You know, she won, I won, and the rest is story. How then did the business grow? How has it impacted? First and foremost, when you have such opportunities, something should have taken you six months to gather, becomes sorted out in the nick of time. 
I was able to purchase um, bigger generator. I got a bigger freezer. I got better blenders, you know, and it's been exciting business-wise, you know. And I look, looking back, even during the COVID-19 period, it was a bigger dream for me. It was my dream coming into reality. Um, I look back and I am grateful. I am thankful for the Kickstart partners. Um, um, that's the international breweries. I'm grateful to them for the opportunity, for the support, and for the um, sponsorship. I'm thankful to the Kickstart team. They've been wonderful. And also for the trainers that came on board. The truth is this. Even if I haven't gotten the fund with the training received, I bet you I would have still gone far in life. So I want to say a big thank you. And it's been exciting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Onyechi. Thank you. <laughs> Interesting story. Interesting story. I like the fact that she found an opportunity and she seized it. A little support from her husband, she seized it and put her mind to it. Like she said, she was out to prove that motherhood does not stop you. And I want to say to everyone here, your dreams are valid. So you see opportunities, go for them. And when you have the right support from a group like the International Beauties PLC and Foundation and the kicks along with all the trainings. Man, the world is your state. Go out there and conquer. Yes. Also, thank you, Inyechi. Very inspiring story there. Next up, we have the second person who has a story to share with us. Okay, great. The second person who has a story to share with us. And remember what Ms. Ophelia said, your story is your connection. Your story is your connection. I see we still have questions for um, on NICEL, um, but let's get done with this segment first of all, and we'll see how we can connect to that. We'll still keep your feedback, your contributions coming in. We'll find a way to get onto that in course of the program. Keep it coming, 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 keep it coming. And we're excited for this story. When Yechi's story was so, so, so inspiring. It shows that with a little, you can go so far. Fantastic. Next up, I present to you the second person who's here to share a success story. I want us to listen and get inspired because sometimes from their stories, you find the answers to your own challenges. So as I call on, the CEO of Prince Captain Tosin Sotande. Please make him welcome. Yeah, you're welcome, Tosin. Hi, guys. It's good to be here. Great to My have you. My name is too. Tosin Sotande. Okay, so um, sometimes in 2016, I had the conviction that I was going to, I wanted to start a printing and branding company, you know. I had that conviction. I had the business idea, you know, I had the attention to details and I had the obsession. I am obsessed to the extent that when I'm driving, I mean, on the road, and then I see this effectively designed, beautifully designed ads on billboards. I'm obsessed to the extent that I, I, I turn my head and even forget that I'm driving. That <laughs> obsession was so deep that eventually I said, this is what I want to do. I want to help brands create an appeal that will make other people to buy. Apart from this obsession, attention to details and every other thing that I had, I had an empty pocket. So I was looking for where do I get the seed capital? How do I start? How do I move forward? I heard of Kickstart 2016 sent him my application. Luckily for me, he was invited. Johnny Doll, the way to Elisha for the boot camp. We were drilled. I mean, those that were there, you will understand. We were drilled, stretched. And most importantly, we were impacted upon. I left there, it was more like a mini MBA because that was my first point of contact on learning on how to run a business. Fast forward to now, the journey has been amazing. A little bit of hiccups here and there, but yes, that is what business is about. The journey has been amazing, and uh, I can categorically tell you that today we have worked with brands, 
such as Nike, Nestle, wow. British Council, Siemens, awesome. Pulse, and about 200 MSMEs scattered around Nigeria. Today, cumulatively, over the years, we've done a turnover in the highest, the height of the eight digits. You know, today we've moved, and then that's a business that started 2016 on the couch in my living room. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this dream was eventually made possible because of that determination, number one, and also because of Kickstart, International Breweries PLC, identifying and seeing the opportunity, giving us this opportunity, and then investing in us as seed capital. That particular seed capital was more of a validation that yes, you're on the right track. Yes, you can make something out of this. And I'm grateful to Kickstart IBPLC for that particular investment those years, and it has turned out to something better now. And we are hopeful that in a matter of years, our organization is going to become a Fortune 500. Now, talking about collaboration, talking about networking, one thing is this. Networking has been embroidered into our day-to-day -day activities. I and my team, I mean, we attend exhibitions, events, and we actively network. We seek out key decision makers, stakeholders in whatever industry that we have interest in to walk up there. And no matter what it takes, some deals it takes us three months, some it takes us three weeks, some it takes us six months. But eventually, our goal is that we need to get into these organizations and help them to solve their pain points, mostly in the aspect of printing and branding. I want to say a very big thank you for, for this opportunity, and I hope I've been an encouragement to someone who's listening. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Tosin. I mean, yours is another inspiring story. I'm, I'm amazed at how far you have come. You really have come far, and it's exciting. It's so it, it, it just shows that one just needs to start. I love the passion, the energy you brought aboard. Fantastic, fantastic story. I'm sure your other alumni are inspired by your story. Thank you so much for that story. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And we wish you greater height. This is just the beginning. There's so much more out there to do. So keep moving, um, keep being inspired. Don't feel like you have a right. Keep aspiring for big things. Well done, Tosin. Yes, 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 yes. We're moving on. I told you there's so much in store, man. We're taking on to the next level. For those of you in Lagos State, this will be good news. Good news for you. Good news for you. Yes, I see a comment from Nene. She says, thank you, International Breweries, for this. They're all The alumni are so inspired. So like I was saying, for those of you in Lagos, I have good news for you. In the next 10 minutes, we're going to be hearing from someone who will be sharing opportunities with us. She is the head micro enterprise and micro enterprise startup for the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. So Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. I'll tell you a bit about this person before she comes up to share with us in the next, um, within the next 10 minutes. It, just a bit about her. She works with the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund in the programs and coordination units as the head micro enterprise and micro enterprise startup. She oversees provision of access to finance, to startup and existing businesses in these spheres. So you have a young business in Lagos, this is the person you should listen to. She's strategic head, human capital professional human capital professional, and she has over 15 years cross-functional career experience spanning microfinance banking, credit and marketing sphere, and she has a track record of leading organizational transformation. She's keen on delivering human resource best practice aimed at sustaining organizational and leadership roles. This afternoon, it's my pleasure and honor to present to you 
the head microenterprise and microenterprise startup for the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. Join me as I make welcome Mrs. Funsho Alabi. You're welcome, ma'am. You have the stage. Good afternoon, everyone. You're Thank welcome, you for the introduction. My name is Funsho Alabi, as you have rightly said, and I'll be talking briefly about Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. So Lagos State Employment Trust Fund was established under the law in 2016. And um, we have a mandate, which is to provide employment, employment by providing access to funds and other business opportunities to residents of Lagos State. And um, um, we have four, uh, three major programs that we run, which are loan, employability, and Lagos Innovate. And we also have a support unit, which we call business support, that also help in achieving this role. So at Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, we have three categories of loans that people can benefit from. We have the microenterprise startup, we have the microenterprise for existing businesses and small and medium enterprise. So for the category of microenterprise startup, those are the people that have learned a skill and they want to start up their business. For example, maybe you're into hairdressing, barbing, tailoring, and you can access up to 250,000 Naira, payable between 12 to 15 months. And a beautiful thing about that is that because it's a startup business, you can access up to three months moratorium period for you to understand the process in your business very well. Then for the microenterprise, this cuts across all business sectors in Lagos State, mostly traders, market people, and the likes. And they can access up to 500,000 Naira payable within 12 months. And the small and medium enterprise can access any amount above 500,000 Naira up to 5 million Naira, and they can pay within 24 months to 36 months. Any loan within Lagos State Employment Trust Fund is 5% per annum. And um, the requirements are very, very seamless. And the basic thing that we request for number one is that you must be a resident of Lagos State. And we also know that through your Lastra ID card. And um, you must have, for the microenterprise startup, you must have a um, training certificate from reputable vocational centers or training institute that issued certificates to you. For example, we have the likes of Last Web, we have WAP, Ministry of Wealth Creation, Ministry of Youth and Social Development, and the likes that can issue such certificates to you. And like I said, you must be a resident of Lagos State, and you must be within the, your your age. The age limit is from 18 years and above. So that is basically for the loan category. And uh, we also have other. Okay, on the loan again, we also have some partnership that we have with other financial institutions and individual or private sectors as well. And we have loans dedicated to women only. We have loans dedicated to people in educational sectors. And we also have some other ones coming up like agriculture, energy, and the likes. So on our employability program, here, under the employability program, we've identified, we identified skill gaps in the society for blue collar job, for people that, we, 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 for people that, okay, maybe you want to, you want to customer service, for the likes of customer service, maybe um, manufacturing, garment making. And we also have funding partners under, under these employability programs. We have funding partners with UNDP, GIZ, USADF. And the, the approach we use in our employability program, we engage organizations to identify skill gaps, like I rightly said, and we train and certify successful shortlisted candidates. We also provide mentoring and counseling to these beneficiaries. And another mandate that we have is that we try as much as possible to place them on job security after graduation. So another thing that we also do at Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, which is the third one, is what we call Lagos Innovate. And this is designed to help the very best founders and startups by facilitating access to four major things. 
high quality workspace and infrastructure. What I mean by this is that we, we this is about technologically inclined opportunities, innovations that somebody, maybe you have a business and you don't have a space where you can run the business. So we can provide workspace voucher for you, whereby we can ask, we assign you to, a, to, a, to an office where you can use and you can display what you do and meet people there as well. Then we also provide learning for you. And we also do early stage investment capital and investors and peer network. What we mean by that is that we have Lagos Hackathon, which we are part of. So people can come with the idea and design something that will be helpful in Lagos State. And for the business support unit, what we do at business support unit is that for all the programs we run, we run in Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, we provide business support units like training, mentorship program. We also do business advisory. We provide business advisory for people. So what I mean by training is that um, for people in businesses, we, we, we put you through the basic training of bookkeeping, customer service, we extend all those um, legal services, uh, tax on, issues on tax and the likes. We also provide those, th those information for you. And in mentorship, we realize that you are in business, maybe you need some level of advice. So we attach you to people that are in your field of business and they can provide mentorship program for you. Then we also do, we also provide business advisory. For the business advisory, we run legal, legal clinics where you can log on to Lagos State Employment Trust Fund and discuss with, um, we, uh, with, uh, with lawyers, people in legal, legal activity. They can put you through how to run your business, what to do and how to do this. Then we also provide accounting software installation training for people. After the training, the, install, the accounting software will be installed for you, which you can use as a payroll to run your payroll, to maintain your bookkeep, and to do all different things. So what I will employ everybody here to do is that, log on to www.lstf.ng. You can join us on all social media and do that, lstf.ng, to have proud information to opportunities in Lagos State. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that exposition on the work you do. And you're doing a great job, I must say. LSETF is doing awesome. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. From what I see, you work, you have an employability program from what you just said, and you also work with business people, do business advisory amongst all that. I want to believe that every person who has listened to us and lives in Lagos State has learned something new today. And we want to say thank you for the good work you're doing. Please keep it up. Thank you very thank much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, we've learned what's happening in Lagos State and how that helps you as a business person or and I'm a person who needs a job and wants to take their life further. There's, there's so much opportunity. All we need is information. And that is what we're bringing to you, information that can help you take the next step, plan for the rest of the year, plan for the next year. Our, our, our goal, our joy will, see, will be to see your business get big, bigger, stronger, and expand globally. First of all, in all the states of Nigeria, and then globally. Next up, so much in store, like I said. Next up, we have someone else. He's from Smedan. Smedan is a small and medium enterprise development agency. Can you tell us about what they do and the opportunities that are bound in their organization? I'll tell you a bit about him. He's Dr. Friday Opara. He began his working career with the Den Icon Limited Merchant Bankers before joining Novotel Consults as a senior consultant. In 1996, he joined the University of Abuja as a lecturer. From 2006 to 2008, he was an assistant professor in ent entrepreneurship and small business management. Dr. Opara was the president, Center for Entrepreneurship Development and Small Business Management. He's the founder and life patron of the Entrepreneurship Club at the University of Abuja in Nigeria. 
He holds a BSc in finance, an MSc in business management and a PhD in policy analysis. And he also has a DBA in entrepreneurship. <laughs> I tell you, we have loaded people, loaded people with a wealth of experience, not just theory, but theory and praxis. So it's easy to connect to what they're saying. He is presently the director, partnership and coordination department of the Small and Medium Enterprise Development Agency of Nigeria, SMEDAN. So in the next couple of minutes, he'll be sharing with us on the opportunities that exist for young entrepreneurs. After that, as usual, there'll be room for questions and answers. So you have questions, you can keep them coming. We'll take them as we progress. Also, you have challenges. That's the idea behind the alumni hangout. We want to know how you were doing, how you have fared the last six months and the last one year, especially for those of us in Nigeria who have had it. In fact, it's been a global issue, the COVID-19 issues, but Nigeria has had its own peculiar challenges. So if you have specific challenges that relate to your business and how it has affected you, or maybe how you are improvising to continue, please let us know so that we can profess solutions you know, to help you get better, get stronger, and keep your head up. In this business, we don't, we, we don't give up. You have all the support you need from the National Beauties Foundation team, National Beauties PLC team, and the Kickstart program. So all the support is available because we want to see you succeed. We want, I mean, at the next alumni hangout, it'd be nice to be telling your own story. Same way we heard from two alumni today. I mean, it'd be nice to know that in the next one year, we have so many, many people that will be so confused as to whose story to be because everyone is doing well. Everyone is so, everyone is excelling in their various niche. And there'll be so many, many, many stories to tell in the next one year. So please, you have a challenge, don't keep quiet, bring it on, send a message. And we have any of our team members who will take it up with you and have a conversation with you on that. The next couple of minutes, Mr. Okpara will be up telling us about the opportunities in Smedan. Smedan is an agency and the full name is the Small and Medium Enterprise Development Agency. So your small business, Smedan is for you. Medium business, Smedan is for you. <laughs> and there's a lot of opportunity. There is opportunity, there is opportunity. Everyone on this program is truly, truly blessed because we're going to be giving much information that should take your business to the next level. Awesome, I see. Oh, Ayoleki sent a message. He says the COVID-19 you mentioned is a killer as it affected my catfish farming. I fell to death by March. I'm just climbing black back. Whoa, sorry about that, Ayoleki. Yeah. But I'm glad that you're trying to make your way back. And you're on this call. I'm sure you get inspired to get up and, and keep running again. Just don't leave, wait till the end because I'm sure you'll be inspired by the time we're done today. Our next speaker is Dr. Friday Opara from Smedan. And he'll be sharing information with us as to opportunities that exist in Smedan and how we can take advantage of them. Please, you have more feedback, more contributions. Yeah, yeah. can you hear me? Fantastic, yes, sir, we can hear you. Welcome on board, sir. Dr. Shidi, I can hear you. Okay, good afternoon, all. Good afternoon, sir, and welcome. Yeah, sorry, I excused myself for a program on all up, and I'm back now. 
Welcome back, sir. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good afternoon, all the participants and beneficiaries of um, the Kickstart of International Bravery. How are you doing? We're doing very well, thank you. Okay. I am standing in for my DG, Director General of the Small and Medium Enterprise Development Agency of Nigeria. And um, as an agency of government, we were established in 2003 for the development and promotion of micro, small, and medium enterprises in Nigeria. And I know that all the enterprises we have established are within the family of MSMEs. So we are within our purview. But over time, too, Smidan have involved themselves in a lot of activities, especially to cushion the effect of um, COVID-19 pandemic on small businesses in Nigeria because um, the small businesses occupy a very unique position in our economy, because they are the vanguard for economic development. They provide employment, they pay their taxes, they increase our GDP and so on and so forth. So Smidan does not play with the micro, small and medium enterprises in ensuring that they do well in their activities. One of the programs we have going now is the mass registration of um, MSMEs. So they register online and get a unique number. And that unique number will be, will be peculiar to you. So anything we are doing here, we'll be able to assess you in order to assist. And one of the areas too, what we are trying to assist is to ensure that businesses formalize their operation through registration with CAC as a corporate affairs commission. Some months back, the, the office of the vice president was gracious enough to reduce the registration fee of business names from 10,000 to 5,000 Naira. And part of the palliative too on MSMEs is that some states have been allocated to register their businesses free with the um, corporate affairs commission. And again too, the DG, is equally a member of the palliative that was introduced by the federal government to ensure that micro, small and medium enterprises are equally taken care of, assisting them to pay, to take some portion of their payroll bill and pay some of the staff. That is part of the palliative um, <coughs> Smidan is involved. Again, to Smidan is a training center for the National Microfinance Bank, for people who want to assess the microfinance um, um, funds from um, NASAL the microfinance banks. Here too, we are doing a program we'll call All Up, One Local Government, One Product, whereby we'll get to a particular local government, identify a product that is unique, and see how we can assist them to the value chain. We equally give money to the microfinance bank that will channel to some of these cooperative societies. And along the line, 70% of the money given to them will be loan, while 30% will be grant. That is in effect, if you are giving 1 million Naira, that means 700,000 will be loan. You have to pay back within two years, the six month moratorium, while 300,000 Naira will be grant that part of the government way of assisting um, MSMEs. Again, in Smidan, in all, in all 36 states of the federation, including um, the federal capital territory, we have an office that each and every one of you can easily assess, no matter the state where you are. We are on a business clinic. In that business clinic, a doctor will be there to diagnose you, know the type of sickness that your business is going through, and try to prescribe um, drugs that we see you through. It is not bubu and shew. It's not all. Um, it's not all. All, um, all one medicine for all type of sickness. If you know if you have a running stomach, you have a different um, drug to take. If you equally have um, if you have a um, headache, you equally have a different um, drug um, to take. So these are areas we assist them. Um, your type of organization in ensuring, or your type of enterprise in ensuring that um, you do well in your area.
So I like the team for this networking for business growth. The guy who talked in the morning on networking, I've made us realize as with that your net, your net work is your net worth. I hope you know. So you have to network very well in order to enhance your business and do part of your networking too should be smidden. You have to be friends smidden anywhere they are within the state and you benefit tremendously from um, the type of um, services um, we render. It's not a lending agency, but we are capacity building agency. And I, I always say that capacity building is more important than money. Because if you are giving money and I, I, I don't have the capacity, you don't know how to utilize that money. At the end of the day, you go back to square one. So Smidan tend to teach people how to fish so that you can go with your net and fish the way you want to fish. I must thank the organizers of this program and international breweries too, for the way and manner they are empowering our youth to do well, creating new entrepreneurs that will take over from the old um, entrepreneurs. Very soon, you will join the class of people like the Dangotes and the Alakijas and so on and so forth. Thank you and God bless you all. Yes, thank you, Dr. Okpara, for that quick overview of what you do at Smedan. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, we have one or two people who have some things they want to clarify from you. I heard you said Smedan is a capacity building organization. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see someone here. Ayoleke says, I have registered with Smedan. Okay. And I have... I got a unique number during this pandemic. Okay. But I haven't heard anything from your organization. So okay. Ayoleke is wondering what next. Okay. Can I get all the questions so I, I will tackle them one okay. after the other? The second person says, non, Chukunon so says, how does one access Medan loan? Okay. So those are the two we have for now. Let's take those two. And if there okay. are more, we'll come back. Okay. Yeah, it's good that I registered um, with the mass registration of what Smedan is doing. It's not now that you get anything from us. People have a misconception. Some people were questioning me from Casino State that they say if you register, you get 50,000 Naira. It is not true. It's, you just, it's like a data bank a, or database. So we have you in our data bank. Anytime we are doing anything, we tend to invite you to come in and participate in whatever we are doing. And again, it's good that you are calling a database so that we we'll recognize you too as part and parcel of the MSME family. That is good. So, but um, I don't know the state you are. If you're in any of the states, get a call to the Smithan office there that they will equally assist you. So, still also, I said earlier on that Smithan is not a lending agency. We don't give money directly. What we do is that under our program, after we finish training you, depending on the type of program we are running, we give out stipend to enable you start one or two things that you are doing. Like we did um, a program in Zamfara, that was last month. We are going to do another one in Calabar from the 1st to 4th of um, December. It's um, on fashion, arts and craft whereby we assemble those who are into fashion, arts and craft within the South-South zone in Calabar. Then after they, then they will do what we call pitching. They pitched their whatever they have within that bracket of that sector. And the age bracket is between 18 to 35 years age. So when they have done their pitching, the two classification, fashion one class, arts and craft one, one class. Then the first, to third person in each of the classes will be given 500,000 Naira, 300,000 Naira, and 200,000 Naira respectively. From the fourth to the 10th position, we'll just be giving 50, 50,000 Naira. So last year we did for South South in Uyo, the state government took it over completely and they are helping their young ones who are into these two areas, fashion, arts and craft. So even when we go to Calabar too, we are trying to ensure that the state government will equally key into the, even in Enugu too, the state government keyed into it. And since then they've done two or three programs for the young people in that state. Uh, Chino also too, 
if you are confused, wherever the state you are, you can equally log into Smidan website and get more and more of what we are doing. We don't give loan. We not we are not a microfinance bank. We don't have the capacity to do that. And our app that established us did not give us such power to do certain. But we do purely. We do training with state government. We do training with private organizations. We do training with public organizations. And the um, international believers too can bring us in to equally come and train them on how to prepare either a business plan or how to market their product or how to, or how to do digital marketing or how to keep records so that you can distinguish your own money from your business money. So that you don't keep chopping your money, thinking that you are chopping your money only. You don't know you have chopped and eaten your entire capital completely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Okpara. Uh, just before we let you go, we have two quick questions. Ooh. One person is saying, do you, you talked about you do capacity building. They're asking, do you do capacity building for farmers? And the second person is asking, when are you coming to or your state for a program? Okay. So when are you coming to Ibadan? And then do you cater for farmers in your capacity building? Okay, okay, Ibadan or your state. Okay, good. Thank you very much. And um, we'll, we'll have a new department that was just established last year that is called Agribusiness and Extension Department. Because you know, before now, Farming have been seen to be a subsistence type of thing by our grandparents. But now we are trying to ensure that farming is business and it's a multi-million naira business too. For the young ones, who knows how to innovate? You introduce innovation in your farming and you do and you go places. So we have capacity building too for farmers and we have products, we have a, um, some um, training, specialized training for farmers under that department. In fact, I know they were in Bayesa recently and they were somewhere in a Kitty too recently, that department. And as soon as they train them on a particular type of um, area, they equally give them equipment that will equally assist them to do their farming very, very well. But after the training too, they encourage them to not themselves into cooperative societies, okay? So that they can have common facility to assist themselves. That is what we do in that area. The guy who is asking whether, when are we going to come to Ibadan, um, which is your state? That, I assume you are in Ibadan too. That means you are in your state. So try and get to the, get to the website, get the telephone number of the Ibadan guy, because Midan is in Ibadan too so that you keep track of what we do. We're almost finishing 2020 budget um, implementation. By the end of um, December, it will be over. We have gone to defend our 2021 budget. So if it is approved, then all your state too will benefit because we'll try to ensure we do in all the city political zones. We pick either two state or one state as allowed us with the budget we have because we are concerned with funding. That is why you too, if you have some members of the House of Rep that you know, you can appeal to them to equally empower some people there so that we can come and train them so that whatever money that is given to them will be utilized effectively. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Okpara, for your time. Thank you for all the exposition you have given. And for those who are still asking, someone asked, when are you coming to Oberi? It's the same question. He says, go okay. to the website and find the contacts of the, okay, good enough, uh, madam. Um, I have a program now at one o'clock. I'm going to also drive here in Abuja. There is a man who is from Kebi, who is a member of the house. He brought some people, about 800 um, young people from Kebi that he wants to empower. But he have asked me then to go and train them somewhere in Aso Drive. And I will build them that I will be with them by 1 p.m. today. And that's why I'm trying to rush out. You know, Wede, the guy who is asking from Wede, I'm from Imo State too. The state is not that organized. Most time we go there to do any program, they are either disorganized completely. But why at times I go there is all because I'm from that state. Tell your people to organize themselves very well. We will be there. <laughs> thank you very much, madam. Okay, then. Thank you. On this note, we'll wrap it up with Dr. Friday Okpara. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to move on. And just as we began with 
opening remarks from a dignitary from the International Breweries PLC. I'll be calling up another distinguished personality from the International Breweries PLC, and she'll be giving us the closing remarks. She's the Corporate Communications Manager. Join me as I welcome Eniola Ali Faweya. Please put your hands together for her. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon once again. Firstly, I'd like to thank you for joining in today's thought-provoking session. I hope it was as impactful for you as it is for me and for our team. As a corporate organization committed to bringing people together for a better world, we are extremely dedicated to empowering young entrepreneurs for a better Nigeria. I urge you today to run with all of the learning points from these presentations from Olumide's words on obsession, Toye's words, her stories about perseverance, and to all of the nuggets that were shared by our presenters. Um, I would also like to ask that you, Kickstart doesn't just stop with International Beauty's Foundation funding you and mentoring you. Um, I plead with you, I urge with you to also mentor other people. That exactly, that really is the dream. All of, all of these presentations you'll be getting from our team who will share this with you at a later time. So once again, guys, thank you. I'd like to leave you with these words from Winston Churchill. Success is not final. Actually, it's a journey. Failure is not fatal. It will pass. But courage to continue is what really counts. Thank you very much for joining Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for those closing remarks. Powerful words by Winston Churchill. So for those who complained that the year had been a bit tough, I hope you heard that. The courage to continue. So hold on. Don't give up. The sky is your starting point. Keep sharing the lessons you have learned from your journey so far. Tell your story. Tell your story. The idea is it's mentorship. It's, it, 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 it's a... It's a relay race. So you run your part, you hand over the baton. And that way we have a bigger, better, stronger world. Wow, it's been over two hours of engaging conversations. I have learned a lot. I believe you have learned a lot. It's been the Kickstart Alumni Workshop 2020 with the theme Networking for Business Growth. And we have heard from great resource persons. We've interacted, taking the questions back and forth. And I want to believe that we have learned a lot. It's been a rewarding experience. And like I said earlier on, we're here waiting for you to go out and excel because next year we want to be sharing your success stories. And so on this note, I want to say thank you to the International Beauties um, PLC, National Beauties Foundation, and the Kickstart Foundation for all the good work you have done. Thank you to all our resource persons who have been speaking to us all day. Thank you to all our participants and don't forget, keep networking so your business can grow. On this note, my name is Mia Baka, and I want to say thank you for having me with us. Have a good day. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks to all our speakers, our participants. We've been discussing building a sustainable business in a tough economy. 2020 has been tough, but you have been tougher. And we're sharing insights for MSMEs. Thank you so much for staying with us. Thank you. Still have questions? Just drop them. We'll get across to you. Don't worry. Yeah, international breweries. Ugochuku says, I love international breweries. <laughs> Gossie, thank you very much. And just before you go, please don't forget, there will be a summit on the 24th of November with a theme, building a sustainable business in a tough economy. So we would like to see every one of you there. Don't forget, there is a 
summit for you on the 24th of November 2020 in Lagos. And the theme is building a sustainable business in a tough economy. Key insights for MSMEs. Our goal is to see you succeed. So be there at this summit so you get all the information you need to have your business stand strong. See you on the 24th of November, 2020. Have a good evening and God bless you. My name once again is Mirabaka. I have been your host and I've absolutely enjoyed myself interacting with you. Thank you so much. The materials will be sent to you. So keep checking your mails because you keep getting information from International Bureau's PLC. I'm sure we had a great time at the alumni workshop. So keep your mails open, keep your phone lines open, you will keep getting information. And see you on the 24th of November in Lagos for better interaction, better networking, better networking. Don't forget that, come with your cards, come with your flyers, come with your pamphlets, because there'll be so much engagement. We'll be networking, more growth. Stay safe. <laughs>